City Skylines is eight years old and arguably more popular and interesting than it was at any other time in its existence. One of the main reasons for this is the strength of its modding community. And after eight years, there are more mods than ever before, over 2,000 in the workshop the last time I checked. So I've decided to create the ultimate beginner's guide to modding in City Skylines by identifying the top 30 mods in order of their importance. We are gonna deep dive into each one of these mods, so I'm dividing the list in half. A video with the second half of this list can be found in the pinned comment, along with a Steam collection of all the mods referenced in this video. And to test them out, we're gonna need a city. So here's one, Moddington. And remember, this list is subjective and reasonable people could disagree. So if you think I missed the mod or you disagree with my rankings, drop a comment below with your thoughts. But without any further ado, let's get this thing started with the most important mod, 81 Tiles 2. This is a mod that I would recommend to any PC player, regardless of whether they want to use other mods or not. And that's because the PC version of City Skylines limits you to nine tiles. You can see right here, I have a city of approximately 70,000 in population and I've almost loaded up these eight tiles. And I can only unlock one more tile by default. And some of these tiles aren't very useful, like this one, which gave me mostly ocean and a little sliver of land that would have been awkward to not have, so I unlocked it. And even if you're playing a mostly vanilla build, if you have a lot of DLC, you could struggle to incorporate them into the nine tile area. 81 Tiles 2 allows you to unlock tiles in a variety of ways. The first of which is through the natural game mechanic using the milestones. At Megalopolis, instead of just unlocking your ninth tile, you unlock every single tile which you're able to purchase as you need them. And the second and third options are in the pause menu under options. In this menu, you can unlock either the 25 tile area, this brings the game in parity with the remaster, or you could unlock all areas so you can build anywhere on your map. But beyond just unlocking tiles, this mod allows you to also change the way you transmit electricity and water, eliminating the need for power lines or water pipes, which can be really helpful if you've built out a large city and are running into node issues. Or if you just really hate placing water pipes under the road right where they belong. Number two, move it. If you were to poll everyone who plays City Skylines and you were to ask them what the most useful mod in the game is, I have a sneaking suspicion most people would say move it. And that's because there's a ton you can do with it. At its most basic level, you can move things. So right here, I've got this crematorium. Hit M to activate the tool and I can move this thing wherever I want. You can also grab nodes and move them around, create new bends, and even straighten things up by holding down Alt, clicking to the center and lining your nodes up. But it does a ton more and I wanna walk through all the different things you can do with the tool. Starting out with this first button, which is follow terrain. The base functionality is to keep anything that you copy or move at its base level. So I'll grab this house and you can see as I pull it up the mountain, it sinks inside of it. I'm gonna control Z this back into its old place and click on this button. And now you can see it will actually go up the mountain and create a flat place for this building. The next button is snapping. Basically what this does is allow things to remain within the grid and snap to it. So I can pull that house back one unit and maintain a straight appearance. Now this house will disappear because I moved it out of its normal grid because I don't have ploppable Rico enabled right now. The next option is single selection and that's what we've been using. So if you hold down shift, you can select multiple items under the single selection of any different kind and you can move them all at the same time. Another way to do this would be the marquee selection tool, which allows you to select a whole bunch of things at once. But you can be really nuanced with this tool as well. Let's say you only want to select trees. These select the rest of these and you're able to select just the trees, even if you select a whole bunch of other things. I like doing this because you can highlight a bunch of trees, control C and paste them all over the place but it can be useful if you wanna get rid of trees as well. Select all of these, hit the delete button, they're all gone, control Z, and they're right back. But let's say you wanna go even more nuanced and there's a building that you just really don't like. You think that this house is terrible. I'm gonna select buildings now and picker, and then I'll select the eyedropper and I can select this one building. I can select everything in the city. The only thing selected is that individual building and I can hit the delete button and just that building disappears. And if you wanna clear this tool right here, just double click the eyedropper and it completely clears that out. The next tool is duplicate in place. So let's say you select something within move it and you click that, it will duplicate it again. Control C will do the exact same thing for you. 
And then we've got the toolbox, which is where things get really, really interesting. So at the very top here, we've got other tools and you can see that there's line up objects. So I want these pillars to be completely evenly spaced. So I'm going to select the nodes. I'll select the first one that I'll hold down shift and select the other nodes as well. Now, if I come in here and I line up the objects, it will evenly space the nodes. For this next tool, let's say I wanted to copy this block over here, but I wanted to mirror it. So it's an exact opposite replica of this block. All I have to do is select all these buildings and then go under other tools and select mirror objects. Now I need to find my anchor point that I'm mirroring from, and it has to be a network, be it a fence or a road. Probably the most common would be a road. I'll select this road here and it completely mirrored it on the other side. It will change the color of some of these buildings. So this right here with the red roof is now this building with the black roof. You can go into here and reset the object and it'll actually change the color of certain things and some of the props as well until you get the right one. And then we have the most powerful part of Move It, in my opinion, the ability to import and export selections. So we have this little pod of modern Japan buildings, and I want to move this into another build. What I would do is select everything here and export that selection. So let's say I want to bring that right back where it was. I go right back into the same tool and I can either restore or import. Restore puts the buildings right back where they were, the same height, and the same location. And I can do that on any map and it would return to this exact same location. Alternatively, I could use the import function. Now, when I hit the import function, this acts as one big object and I can place this wherever I want to. There is one thing to keep in mind about this tool. I've created this beautiful mesa here to demonstrate it. If you were to restore a building in place and the terrain doesn't line up, the building will be wherever it was in its original location. You can fix this, go into your height tools and you can select to bring the objects to the terrain height, and that will elevate it way up top to the terrain, at least most of the buildings. This one is not in the right location. I'm gonna control H this, which is actually the function to object height, and then you can select something and it will bring everything to that object height. So this is a very powerful combination of tools. If you ever have a burned down building or something like this, you can select that and then reset the object and it will be good as new again. Next, we have the rotate tools. And right here, I have five rocks that are all completely the same, facing the same direction. What you can do is select all of those and hit rotate randomly, and it'll give you this more randomized look and feel. And it can be really helpful if you want things to look a little bit more natural. You can also rotate at center and select the center object, have things rotate around that center, or line them up by rotate in place and select the object that you want everything to rotate towards. And then within the height tools, there's only one tool we haven't touched on, and that is slope objects. This allows you to slope things out and make things look a little bit cleaner. So I've selected all the nodes and I want these to slope evenly. And you can see it does that for me. So now it's a nice clean slope through here. You can slope buildings, you can slope parks, you can slope whatever you want. Number three, City Vitals Watch. I believe this is the oldest mod on the list. It was released one month after City Skylines and it's just as relevant today as it was the day it was released. And that's because, in my opinion, it is the most important quality of life mod, providing you quick access to all of your city's vital information in one easy to use panel. This information isn't revolutionary. For instance, what you're seeing here with elementary school availability, is the exact same thing you see over here. But being able to see this all at once is incredibly helpful. And this mod is simple. It allows you to come through here and get rid of things maybe that you don't care about a ton. It also gives you the ability to close the mod so it's not in your way and reopen it using this new button up here. And I found this mod to be particularly useful if my city stops growing and I'm not sure why. I can look at all of this information in one place and narrow down that, for instance, I don't have enough jails and I don't have enough high schools. And if I build those, my city will likely start growing again. Number four, Picker. This is a quality of life enhancing mod that is so important it made its way into the City Skylines remaster on console. Essentially, this is an eyedropper tool that allows you to select an object in game, be it a network, a building, or a park, and clone it. There are two ways to access this tool. You can either hit T, which is the hotkey, or you can select the tool right here, and you can even move the tool around using your right mouse button. I find this to be most useful when I want to clone a transportation network. So right here, for instance, you see that I've got a bike network right here and one right here, and I missed the segment right here. Rather than digging through all the menus, I can use this tool to select this one 
and simply upgrade this, easy as pie. This is a mod that becomes more powerful if you use it with other mods. For instance, if you have network skins and you modify a roadway network, you're able to actually clone that custom roadway network using Picker. If you have Move It, you can select an object within Move It and hit T, and it will immediately clone that object. And if you have Rico, you can grab a global building and place it wherever you want. I do not have that feature enabled in Rico, so these buildings will despawn. But just because I don't have ploppable Rico enabled doesn't mean it's not useful on growables. I was able to clone this building four times in a row. I just had to place it within its proper zoning district. One of the handy new additions to this mod is this menu right here, which shows you objects that you've recently selected. So this can be a huge time saver if you're trying to find an object that you recently placed. It's important to remember that this mod does not change vanilla game functionality. So if you want to clone one of these skyscrapers, for instance, you're gonna have to have a mod like Game Anarchy that allows you to place multiple instances of a unique building. This is just a time saver, but it is a huge one, which is why it's number four on the list. Number five, Toggle It. This is probably the mod I received the most questions about. It's this panel up here with the letters. And basically what it does is allow you to see certain things that are normally hidden behind the info views, such as your contour lines. You can quickly toggle them on and off. I also love that it gives you the ability to remove district names. Normally when you zoom out, all the district names show up and I can turn those off so I can see a nice overhead view of my city. The other functionality that I find to be essential is this button right here, automatic info views. Normally when you come into certain tools, you get this white menu and the flashing can be really jarring. If you disable this, it gives you the ability to enter this menu without it flashing white at you. This can be really helpful when you're building a park or if you already know where you wanna place something and just wanna see how it fits within the context of your city. You also have the ability to customize this tool. Go into the settings by clicking on this gear icon and it will show you all the different options available to you. For me, I like to go into this menu to customize the glyphs. For instance, I made contour lines C so that I can remember what C means, contour lines. This mod is absolutely essential for me and I absolutely love it. And I would highly recommend you pick it up. Number six, Network Anarchy. Similar to Move It, if you were to pull City Skylines players, I believe that Network Anarchy would be right at the top of the list of the most useful mods. And there is a connection between the two. Cuboid has developed both of them. This mod replaces a number of older mods, including the Fine Road tool, Fine Road Anarchy, Any Outside Connection, Node Spacer, and Key Anarchy, just to name a few. And this mod is incredibly useful, so I'm gonna try to quickly run through all of its features. Network Anarchy works on any network, so I've entered the road menu, and what you'll notice is that there's this new button here, which opens up the Network Anarchy tool pane. The top slider is the elevation step. So by default, normally it is much higher than one meter. I believe it's three meters. So it's a lot of control that you have there. Next, there are five different modes for the tool. The very first mode is the unmodded road placement behavior. So that means that if you're at ground level, your road will be on the ground. And if you try to build across a river, it'll place a bridge. The next button forces the use of ground segments. So same behavior that you had before right here, but if I were to try to build a bridge instead of a bridge, I get ground segments, which will actually block the river. So got to be really careful with this one, but it can be very useful, particularly if you want to create maybe a sunken highway. Right here, you can see that I'm actually dropping into the ground now with this tool. And if I were to place this, I will be 14 meters underground. The next button forces the use of elevated pieces. So this can be really valuable if you're trying to create a viaduct, you'll get a elevated segment no matter what. The button next to it forces the use of bridge segments. This right here, the truss bands, is what you get when you use the force bridge pieces option. Then the final option here forces the use of tunnel pieces. So of interest with this one is if you have a length of road that's at least three segments long, you will end up with two end pieces where you're exiting the tunnel and one underground. If you were to make this two segments long, you'll get this short piece of tunnel, nothing underground except for the center. This can be useful if you're trying to create a tunnel in an area where it might be a little unconventional, or if you want to have some sort of land bridge going over the top of a tunnel like this. And then we get to the namesake of the mod, Anarchy, and you can activate this by either pressing Control A or clicking this button here. And you'll know that it's on because Chirper will be red, burning with fury as he feels the power. So this mode basically allows you to do anything that you want with a network. 
Let's say I'm building a new train track and I want to run parallel tracks and then have them run really nicely into one another. You get this weird bending, which is not how train tracks work. I can deselect this option here, which toggles road bending, and that allows me to place or at least attempt to place some train tracks that the game doesn't otherwise alike. If I hit control A, now I can do this. All limitations of the game are now removed and I can place this just like this. And I bring this example up because it allowed me to create this little rail yard right here, something that you wouldn't be able to create in the vanilla game, all because of anarchy. One of my favorite ways to use anarchy is to get rid of the bending. Right here, I've created two roads and I wanna turn this into a triangle. And look what the road does. It bows and bends as it finds angles that the game doesn't know what to do with. You turn anarchy on though and everything becomes straight and you can create some really interesting blocks. This right here is a triangle that would not be allowable without network anarchy. And I think it looks absolutely fantastic. And I find this to be incredibly useful when you're creating freeway exits. For instance, if I were to create this here, a dirt road, I could then come and turn in basically wherever I'd like. And then so long as I have anarchy on, I can upgrade this, no problem. Reverse it, it will let me get away with this. And it looks really, really good. That's a nice tight angle, something you might struggle to get in a vanilla game. The next button is toggle node snapping and the default behavior is that you snap to a node so it limits your range of movement. If you disable this, you can basically operate anywhere you want and it gives you much finer control of the roads. The next option is toggle collision and this can be really useful if you're either upgrading dirt roads to paved roads or you're upgrading a two lane road to a four lane road. Basically. If you upgrade, you won't end up losing the buildings on the street. You will lose the zoning though. So that's something to be aware of. So if you do not have Rico on, the buildings will disappear, but it allowed me to upgrade right into this park. And then I could use move it, for instance, to back this out and try to fit this all in. And then the final option is toggle straight slope. So what this one does is allows you to build a road without following the terrain. With Anarchy on, if I were to place a road going up this mountain, you can see that it more or less follows the terrain. If I enable this, it will actually build up a the ground beneath here and create a nice 45 degree angle straight up the hill. So in some cases, this can look better, especially if you are building on steep slopes and you want roads that look a little more reasonable. And then a couple of random things about this mod. There are certain props, such as these rocks, that will respond to anarchy. So right now I can't place this in the park, but I control a anarchy on and now I can place that right in there. This same functionality does not extend to prop anarchy, for instance. So I cannot place the boulders in here with prop anarchy on, but with network anarchy, I can place this right in here. And then pausing and going into the options menu, I want to this option right here reduces the number of cantering masts on the trains. So if you eliminate this, you will have three times as many masts here. Watch, I will re-enable this. Doesn't that look better? So much better. You can also adjust the maximum turn radius for realistic tram tracks. Right now you can do a 90. That's always been something that irks me. You can increase that turn angle if you want it to feel a little bit more realistic. And then there's one option that's off by default that I think is really important. This is basically the node spacer option. So enabling this, will allow us to change the default spacing in between nodes. The default is 96 meters, and this is really important when you're creating bridges. Right here, for instance, is a European stone bridge with the default spacing. And let's say I reduce the spacing and I take it down to 54 meters. Let's see how this looks. We now have twice as many bridge pillars, and this is all because we've adjusted this. So this is basically the same as the node spacer. Like I mentioned, it can be really helpful if you want to create some really unique looking bridges. And you can even change the spacing midway through to create really unique bridges. Number seven, extra landscaping tools. This is an absolutely wonderful mod that extends a lot of functionality that's available in the map editor into a normal playthrough. So if you go into landscaping, you'll notice a couple of things that are available that aren't normally there. So now I can come through here and actually add sand in a normal playthrough, which means that if I don't have a beach, I can create one or I can remove it. Either way, my choice. We also have this new option here, these new brush options, and this is available in all the tools. Where I find it to be the most useful is within the softened terrain. Being able to turn this way, way down can really help you control the landscaping when you're trying to make adjustments. It's a lot better than those three options that you normally have available to you. 
You could also adjust this to be a single brush. And now I'm gonna grab this height here and we can make really fine grain adjustments, make them very square if that's what you want to do so you have a nice fine edge. But the fun doesn't stop there because you can use this tool with your landscaping as well. Let's say you wanna brush down a bunch of these jacaranda. Change the brush from single to let's say 200 and you can go right along your coast and add these trees all over the place or remove a whole bunch at once. Now, interestingly, this ability to delete multiple trees at once is available on the console version of the game, but is not available on PC without a mod. And this brings that console functionality to the PC. Where this can be really useful is if you take your brush strength down, you can create a nice mix of trees. So I'm about 25% here and I can come along here and then mix it in with a different kind of tree. And now we have a variety of trees inside of this forest that we created. It also adds ground resources. So this is really valuable if you have a map that doesn't have a variety of resources available or if you accidentally deplete them because you have your vanilla depletion mechanic on, you can come through and add ore, foil, or fertile ground. Fertile ground's key because if you add trees, you can inadvertently get rid of the fertile land forever. This will allow you to place it back in there. And it's as simple as using a nice little brush and you can just paint these in. And if you use your right mouse button, you can actually get rid of these as well. And then the final thing this adds is the water panel. And this is very useful if you wanna create ponds. There we go, we've got that big crater right there and now we can add a water source in here. Since it is going to be a lake, I'm gonna turn this way, way down. Zero is actually a suction point. So if you want to pull water or suck it out, you put that to zero. I'm gonna go just one higher so it's very steady. And then I'll place this. And then if you highlight this, you can see the level that the water is set at. And if you hold the left mouse button, you can adjust the height. So I'm gonna set this to be right about here, and that should fill this all the way to the top. And I ended up adjusting this to be just a little bit larger, but you can see that now we have a lake, and we might have to adjust things here and there to make sure we're not spilling over. So this is a very valuable mod, especially if you want to create different water features around your map. Number eight, find it to. Find It 2 is an interesting mod. It's both a quality of life mod and a really powerful mod that lets you place things that you wouldn't otherwise have access to in the game. So to begin, click on this magnifying glass. By default, you can search for any asset, custom or vanilla. So let's say I want to find the lighthouse and place that. All I have to do is type in lighthouse and now I can click on this abandoned lighthouse and place it. So I've decided that this will look great right here at the end of this little island. This is something I wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Same thing with castle pieces. I can now add a castle ruins or place some of these network walls that come with the castle as well. This mod also opens up a couple of tree options that you wouldn't otherwise have. For instance, let's say I want to place apple trees. I now have them available and can place them wherever I want. So this is a great way to supplement an apple orchard because now I can place these trees myself and create an orchard that is not a functional orchard, but looks just like one. This will also open up the option of placing Rico buildings. These are some buildings that are too large to be growables. You'll find these in the workshop. In this instance, I don't actually have any, but all of the seaside resorts buildings show up as Rico buildings, and I'm able to place them through here. But this mod isn't useless if you don't have Rico. In fact, I've cleared this block right here and I wanna place all custom buildings. So I'll narrow this down to just lower density residential and now I can select individual homes to place. And now when I resume, this block should stay here. That's because I've chosen buildings that can grow in this area and fit within these tiles. So this provides me a great deal of control that I wouldn't otherwise have. Another powerful way to use this tool is to specify the size of the buildings that you want. So right here, for instance, let's say I want two by four buildings. I could do that by selecting the width here and the depth here, and it will narrow this down to buildings that fit within those criteria. Let's say I want to randomize these though. I've set my random key within the find it pause menu to be the question mark. And if I hit this button, it will select a random building for me. And now I can just go down the line plopping different buildings. You also have the ability to create sets of tags. So let's say I want to create a new tag. Make this one word. If you create two words, it'll add two tags. This creates a new custom tag and I can give this to other buildings. This is important because you can randomize buildings within a tag list. So I will show the custom tag panel and then I'll have to press the refresh button to get this to show up. 
and now my new tag test shows up. And now when I select this button here, only the buildings within this tag list will show up. This is really helpful if you wanna have the exact same buildings spawning within a specific neighborhood. So I can now randomize between these two buildings. These are the only two that will show up when I hit the random button. And there are even more powerful options here. For instance, clicking this plus will show more filters and look at all of the things you can filter by. Asset creator, building height, building level, the district style it falls within, whether things are used or unused, whether they conform to the terrain or not. And then finally, you can filter by sub buildings. And this is kind of the wild west of categories, but it's really powerful. Sub buildings are basically portions of larger buildings that you can take in place on their own. So for instance, the cargo hub has this, which is basically just a bunch of cargo containers that you can place on the shore. So this is very niche, but it does provide some interesting options. And then lastly, I want to point out the props. There are a number of props that you can place that are not available to you in a normal vanilla game, including some of these flags and some of these posters. But lighting is something that is really important within here. So if you select the lighting option, you can see that there are a ton of lights available to you, many of which are not available in the vanilla game. So you might find this valuable because there are certain lights that you wouldn't otherwise be able to place, like these ground lights that you could use to illuminate a whole street and create a really unique vibe. You can even place things like smoke markers and make smoke appear like it's coming from the ground, or even place animal markers to get animals to spawn. So alone, Find It 2 is an amazing quality of life enhancing mod that opens up some new gameplay options. And with mods like Ploppable Rico, it becomes really powerful, but we'll get into that a little bit later on in the video. Number nine, Surface Painter. Surface Painter is technically a plugin of the extra landscaping tool. And basically it opens up the ability to paint a couple of very basic surfaces, pavement, gravel, ruined, or remove surfaces that come with assets. Where this is really useful is you can paint in areas like this so that you don't have those weird grassy areas. And if you want to undo it, right mouse click instead of left mouse click, and you can delete that surface that you just painted. So you can do this with a variety of surfaces. Here, for instance, I'm painting the gravel. And what you can see is I'm actually painting out the original surface that came with this asset, which can be valuable. In this instance, let's say I wanted to make it look rural, this would certainly do it. However, you may not want to do that. Holding down shift will ensure that you don't override the existing texture, at least not too much. And as I mentioned, it does come with these four textures. So these are available to you. And then it also comes right here with the ability to clip. And where this can be valuable is let's say you want to remove the sidewalk look from this road, go over this with the clip tool. Now the sidewalks are gone. I can do the same thing underneath this building. So this can be really helpful if you have a building that you think has too much pavement, you can just get rid of it. So obviously this is a very powerful tool and I would recommend it to anyone who picks up extra landscaping tools. Number 10, Game Anarchy. You might be surprised to see this one on my list, let alone ranking as high as it does. But the reason it's on here is because it replaced the number of mods that were absolute requirements for me. For instance, the ability to fast exit out of the game and skip the game intro interface. Those are things I always had in my mod list and this does both of them. It also enables the achievement system when you have mods and it shows when mods were updated right here in the options menu, which I think is an absolutely fantastic feature. But beyond those helpful features, there are exploits in this mod as well. You can unlock everything or custom unlock certain milestones. You can also give yourself unlimited money, set up a hotkey to add money to your bank account, or even adjust the starting money that you get when you begin a game. Control Shift G brings up the Game Anarchy toolbar. There's really only a couple of things that I'm interested in, and it's really the first general tab. I like that this gives you the ability to place unlimited monuments, unique factories, unique facilities, festival areas, anything you want. I really hate the limitation that you have on some of the unique buildings, and this mod takes it away. You can also ad adjust your resource depletion rates, so I usually set ore and oil to unlimited. The service and economy tabs are basically exploits. You can remove certain types of pollution, remove fire spreading, remove garbage, or increase the taxation rate on your citizens, industry, or commercial. If you want to cheese the game like that, by all means, go ahead and do it. For me, that takes the fun out of it. But still, 
This general tab is incredibly valuable. Being able to place two types of the same building is absolutely awesome, especially if you have a region with multiple cities. Number 11, Ploppable Rico Revisited. I feel like I've been talking about this mod a lot, and that's because it is so important and interacts with so many other mods. This right here is the button for Ploppable Rico Revisited, but it's really not where most of the magic happens. What I'm seeing here are the seaside resorts, and if you have a larger building that is bigger than the 4x4, they will show up in here underneath the Ploppable Rico menu. But that isn't where Rico is most powerful. I can click on any single residence and I'll find this new icon. And if I click on this, it brings up this new menu. I can create my own variant of this building by adding a local and I can adjust the characteristics of the building. So let's say I don't like the number of homes within this house. I could say that now it's 500. Save and apply changes. And now when I click on this building, I can see that 500 households are now in the Smith residence. So let's use Rico in a more realistic scenario. And let's say I want to turn this medium grocery store into a real commercial building. Right now, this is a tourism asset. And when I place it, rather than helping meet my commercial needs, it's actually going to attract visitors and tourists. But if I click on this new option, I can now add a local version of this and turn it into a commercial building. I can adjust the number of jobs. And now when I look at this, it is actually a commercial building and it's helped meeting my commercial demand. You can tell that this is the case because now it needs commercial goods, something it didn't need before. And when we click in this menu, we can see all of the jobs that are available. So that is a very powerful portion of this tool, but we can go even further. In the options menu, we can change the behavior of growable buildings. For instance, we can ensure that growable buildings can survive outside of their correct zone. So we'll select the non rico growable buildings can survive outside of their correct zone. We do the exact same thing with district specializations. So let's say I have a mid-century modern building. I can now place that outside of a mid-century modern district and I can make all plopped buildings historical. I can also prevent building styles from removing existing buildings. And this is really interesting if you want to redevelop something. I want to show you this one actually. So I've quickly created this little district and applied the Brooklyn and Queens theme to it. I now have the ability to remove the theme and these buildings will not despawn. This opens up an opportunity. Let's say I want to add a district specialization. In this case, I'm going to apply residential wall to wall. Nothing will happen unless I remove a building. So let's say I remove this building, this one, and this one. Now I have these new wall to wall buildings spawning in between these Brooklyn and Queens mid rises. And to me, this feels like redevelopment. And I absolutely love that Rico opens this up to you. But beyond that, in combination with move it, I can now move these buildings wherever I'd like and they will not despawn. For instance, I've just moved this building outside of a zoned area and it will continue to exist and thrive. Nothing needs a zoning district at this point in time. This means that I can also create completely customized neighborhoods using the tags that I created and find it earlier. There are also a few more things you can do. You can ensure that plopped buildings don't despawn. You can ensure that disasters don't impact Rico buildings, and you can get rid of low land value complaints and other complaints from buildings that you plop. This is really valuable if you plop a level three building, for instance, it doesn't have the time to progress up there, so it will complain until it naturally reaches level three. So all in all, I think that Ploppable Rico Revisited is one of the most useful mods in the game. You can use it in combination with other mods and it makes those mods better. So I would absolutely add this one to your list of mods to get. Number 12 is Hide It. Hide It is a simple mod. It allows you to hide things in the user interface and in the game itself. For instance, I never use the in-game radio, so I always hide the little radio icon that shows up up here. You can also disable sprites or props or ruining, whatever you'd like to do. If you don't like specific animals, you can get rid of those. So I know that some people really don't like the seagulls and all their pooping, so they'll click this and now all of your birds are gone. You can also disable certain sounds. If there's any sound that you find to be particularly offensive, you can disable it through this mod. And then I like to disable a number of props. I hate all the billboards, the neon signs and the ads that are on buildings, so I get rid of those. I also get rid of some of the garbage containers and garbage bins, and I also get rid of ruining. So tree ruining and prop ruining when they're by water or in dirty areas, I hate that. And I also get rid of the dirty water color and the grass pollution color. This is what you'd see in industrial areas, and I think it looks pretty terrible when you have the purple ground, so I like to get rid of that. 
So this is an absolutely amazing mod to customize the visual appearance of your game. It does nothing to change the underlying mechanics. It just makes things look just more custom to you. So I would highly recommend this mod to anybody. Number 13, Bob. Bob is an amazing tool that allows you to replace or remove trees and props on individual assets. For instance, on this pond, I've removed all the trees and the props. To do this, I hit Alt B and then I selected this asset. You're able to both replace and remove things within this menu. Let's say I wanted to remove this bench. If I click on it, the bench will become highlighted and I can do one of two things. I can remove the probability of this bench and take it down to nothing, hit apply, and now the bench will never show up again. I can also select this bench and revert it. So now the bench will show back up, the probability is back up to 100, and it is exactly as it was supposed to be. I can select the bench again and decide that I want it to be something else. Let's say that I want the bench to be a go nuts billboard. All I've got to do is select it here. And now when I look at this asset, it's now a go nuts donuts billboard. If I don't like this, I can always revert it back. And now it's the bench again. I think one of the more common uses for this mod is to select buildings and change the trees. So I've just selected this house and I can see that it has two basic trees. It's got this bush right here, and I might want to replace these with some of the newer bushes. This new wild hedge. Select apply and save changes, and now it's like this on every single home that looks like this. Now do keep in mind, there's no way to modify just one building. So if you change this one, it's actually changing every single building that looks just like this. Also keep in mind that if you look at a larger, more complicated building, a sub buildings menu can pop up as well. Each of these sub buildings will have their own assets that can be removed individually, but you're gonna to have to go through each of the sub buildings to modify the entire asset. But the fun doesn't end there. There are some extra functions that you might wanna be aware of as well. If you click on the prop and tree scaling, you can adjust the size of trees or other props universally. So let's say we wanna change the scaling of the young linden. I will go over here into trees, type in linden, and then I can adjust the maximum and minimum scale. Those are very different sizes. Do keep in mind that when you do this, you're adjusting every single tree like this in the game or every single prop, not just the one you selected. Then there's one thing about this mod that I think gets overlooked, the ability to use it on networks. So I can select this road and eliminate specific things about these networks. Let's say I don't like the speed limit sign. I can remove the probability, take it to zero. Now there's no more speed limit signs. You can also wholesale replace certain features of the roadway network by clicking on a replacement pack. And I don't have any of these available right now, but let's say you wanted to replace all the arrows with Australian road arrows. If you had those downloaded, you could select these, apply the pack, and all the arrows would become the Australian road arrows. And finally, there's one more thing that you can do in the mod. You can adjust your visual settings. You can prevent ruining of trees and props. Obviously, this isn't as valuable if you have hide it, but you can also change your wire thickness on your electrical lines, make them thinner, which can look a little bit better. So in general, I think that Bob could be one of the most powerful visual enhancing mods. Really, your imagination is your limit within the mod, and that's one of the reasons I love it so much. So I'd highly recommend you check it out and experiment around with it. Number 14, Tree Control. Tree Control is an amalgamation of a whole bunch of different tree mods all rolled into one. So it does everything from provide tree anarchy, tree snapping, tree LOD fixes, unlimited trees, tree rotation, forestry lock, all of those mods rolled into one. To activate the core functionality though, Tree Anarchy, you have to hit Control A. And when you do, the tree down here will turn red. As soon as you do that, it's pretty simple. You can grab a tree and place it anywhere that you'd like. You can see it's spinning around, it's rotating, and that is the tree rotation aspect of it. But the mod does more than that. Right here, you can see tree snapping. If I enable this, trees will snap to different things, like, for instance, this building. And you might wonder, why would I ever want to do this? Well, for certain assets like the Nona Terrace asset put together by Mac Welshman, you need to be able to place trees on top of the asset, and this is a way to do it. Then let's head into options under the pause menu. I wanna show you a few more things. First of all, you can hide the buttons if you know the shortcuts. Under the tree tab, you could crank this all the way up if you wanna have a dense forest and you have a really beefy rig. Crank that all the way to the top. That's what I do in most of my builds. And then I wanna draw your attention to this. The LOD basically is when you zoom out far enough, you get a lower detail model for the trees. There's the detailed model, 
this is the less detailed model and that looks pretty bad if i go into this option though and select a higher detail i'm going to insane look at how nice that looks i go in this is clearly the higher detail model this is the lower detail model still looks pretty good if your computer can handle this i would recommend turning it up because it makes it look a ton better you might be interested in forestry lock because if you want to place a row of trees in a farm field for instance you'll want to lock this so you don't inadvertently get rid of your fertile ground right here's a great example of that with forestry lock on i can add a row of trees and it will not get green underneath there if i turn this off you'll see that the ground got a bit darker this is now becoming a forestry industry and that fertile ground is disappearing so i'd recommend turning this on if you want to have trees in the middle of your fertile ground and then finally, there are a couple more things you can do with this mod if you have Move It as well. If you select the tree, you can use Page Up to make the tree raise up or Page Down to make the tree go to the ground. You can also use the period to increase the size of the tree and the comma to shrink it. This can be useful if you want a baby linden or if you want the Godzilla of lindens. Really, the choice is yours. So this is a very useful mod and I would recommend it for just about anybody. Number 15, prop control. And if you're guessing that this is very similar to the tree control mod we just went over, it is. The main purpose of this mod is to allow you to place props anywhere that you'd like without collision. To activate it, hit control P and now you can place this prop wherever you'd like. You can also hit the period button to increase the size of a prop or minus to make it even smaller and then place it wherever you'd like. It also has a snapping option so you can snap props to buildings just like you can in the asset editor. If you pause and go into the options menu, you have some of the same controls that you had for tree controller, such as elevating the prop elevation on a terrain change and adjusting all of the shortcuts, many of which are exactly the same. It also has adaptive visibility distances. This basically allows larger props to remain visible longer and smaller props to disappear quicker. And then finally, just like tree controller, you're able to raise up and lower down props using the page up and page down function. All in all, both of these mods have very similar functionality and I'd recommend picking them both up together. And I think that's where we have to leave it for today, but stay tuned for the second half of this list, which will be coming out in a couple of days, or if it's already been released, it's in the pinned comment below. And I'd really like to know what you think about this list. So let me know down in the comments. And if you've liked this video or you've learned something, please hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I really can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care. Bye-bye.